Jonah chapter 1. Jonah is a very short book, four chapters, and it speaks about this person, the prophet Jonah, called the son of Amittai. And he lived in the time of Jeroboam. Jeroboam. The second. Uh, this would be the Israel kingdom, the right? house of Israel. Part of the northern kingdom. So in that northern kingdom, Jonah was identified as a prophet of God. So we talk about presence of God, you know, the word of the Lord. This is Jehovah, right? So this is the background of Jonah. And in, and in this background of Jonah, it takes place in Israel, not in Judah, in Israel, the northern part of the kingdom. Now at that point in time, it is the beginning of the uh, Assyrian Empire. And the Assyrian Empire is very big. Uh, one of its major cities is Nineveh. Nineveh being a great city and it's a very big city. Uh, Archaeology has it to be about 50 miles square. So it takes days to walk across that city. So it's a big city. Uh, this particular book of Jonah has a number of interesting points and also a number of points that poses some challenges and questions. Uh, and hence, uh, there has been controversies around the book of Jonah, although short it may be. So let's take a look at Jonah. Uh, it speaks of the word of the Lord, meaning somehow the word of God, God spoke to Jonah. Now, how did God speak to Jonah? We are not told. So it only says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, arise, go to Nineveh, right? Nineveh, uh, and, and actually the word Nineveh is pronounced as uh, Nineveh, Nineveh, right? Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. Now this is what... Um, cry out against it is uh, to call to call on to call on Nineveh uh, regarding their wickedness their evil that has come before the face of God uh, the, the picture that to come up means it rise up to the face of God, right? It rises up to the face of God. So this is face of God. So it is an expression, right? It's like an idiom. The evil, the things that they have done that is against God has floated up to God. So we see God as above and the expression is, it has come before my face, come to my attention. The question that many people have is, why Nineveh? Why not other cities? Why is it that in the entire Tanakh, the Old Testament, that you have a prophet of Israel, uh, a, a Hebrew prophet, being sent to a foreign country? And that would be in Assyria. And Assyria is a bad place. Uh, why only Nineveh and not anywhere else? Uh, and people would say, well, I'm sure that there are other places that, that's equally bad, right? Like Babylon. Uh, but it talks about this, Nineveh, go and deal with them. So that's the first question. Why did God have to deal with a foreign nation? If they don't know God, then God has always let them be. Uh, they have conquered Canaan. 
uh, and they have uh, defeated many enemies. I'm sure there are other enemies around that are equally alienated from God. But why did God take exception to Nineveh? Well, we, we don't really know. Right? Now, the interesting part in from verse 3 is Jonah. And the word Jonah or Yonah, that's how you pronounce it. Okay? Yonah. Remember, in Hebrew, there is no J. So, Jonah is actually a Greek uh, name. So, it is pronounced as Yonah, and Yonah means dove. Uh, it could mean that he, he is very patient, very meek, or he is the bearer of, uh, of mourning. Right? And so, Jonah arose and he left for Tarshish. And we really don't know where Tarshish is. But interestingly, the way that the, the, the chapter speaks is that he, flew, uh, he fled from the presence of God. Can anyone actually flee from the presence of God? Think about it. But it says here that Jonah actually went away from the presence of the Lord. And so you need to remember that Israel would be a place of God's promised land and God is present in Israel, in the temple and by extension in the nation. And so when you leave Israel, that means that you are leaving the presence of the Lord. And so as he wanted to leave, he can't, Go and and and, and uh, buy a ticket and and, and, and or, or roll his boat somewhere else. So he went to Joppa. And he, he calls it Joppa, but the Hebrew name is Yafo. Yafo is the Hebrew name. Joppa is the Roman name. Right? This is a Roman name. And so you ask yourself, how do you get Roman name in, at a time where there was no Roman Empire? Well, this is a translation. And so they use the name Joppa. And you remember the, 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 the place Joppa would be where in the book of Acts, Peter had a dream where the blanket came down where there were uh, unclean animals and the voice said, Peter, rise, kill and eat. That is Joppa. But in the Hebrew name, it's Yafo. And that is near, that is a, 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 a harbor. That's a harbor. So he went there and he found a ship going to Tarshish, paid the fare and went with them from the presence of the Lord, meaning he left Israel. Okay? Now, let me just show you where this place is. This is Joppa or this is Yafo. It is about, I think, about 20 miles east of Jerusalem, uh, maybe more. And it is on the way, it's at the, at the coast, the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Right? That is Yoppa. And around there, slightly further up, uh, you would find... Um, Haifa. I think you'll find Haifa, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then the entire thing is, he would take a boat from here, and he would go all the way. Now, is this Tarshish? This is Spain. Uh, maybe it's there. Maybe it's further up. 
to England. Or we call it the British Isles. Now, we don't really know where Tarshish is. So it is far away from Israel. So Israel is right here, right? And so that was the intent. Now, Nineveh, Nineveh is here. And so this is part of the Assyrian Empire. And the whole story is, he's brought back to somewhere here and he had to walk to Nineveh. All right? That, that's how the picture is. So you just understand that it involves the Mediterranean Sea to the east, and then he came back by fish to the coast of the Assyrian Empire, and he walked to Nineveh. Now, in verse 4, we have this story. Jonah ran away from his responsibility. God sent a great wind on the sea and there was a mighty tempest on it. This is a storm, okay? This is a storm. And it was a big one. And it describes that the ship was about to be broken up. Gives you the picture of Jesus in the Sea of Galilee. He was sleeping and the disciples were on the boat. Right? And that's, that's the same picture that's drawn here. When the seamen, it's called the mariners, the seamen, people of the sea, right? They were afraid and every man cried out to his God, and threw cargo into the ship to lighten the load so that it won't sink so fast. But Jonah had gone down to the lower parts of the ship and then he was fast asleep as though he was dead, right? As though he was dead. Not that he was dead, as though he was dead. And then the captain came to him. Hey, what do you mean? Sleeper, call on your God. So everybody had a God. And then he told Jonah, pray to your God. Maybe your God will stop this and then we all won't die. The continuation of the story, verse 7, say, let's cast lots. And the way they cast lots is so that they will try to see is who caused this trouble? They always think that when something happens, you know, in this particular case, it appears to be an unusual storm. And it may be that they never expected to have a storm. And they see this as a punishment. Or it is something divine, right? Divine. Now understand one thing. God doesn't force Jonah uh, because man is made with free will. But God is angry with Jonah because after he heard from God, he disregarded God's instruction. He ran away. And it says, ran away from the presence of God. So it is that picture that seems to be very serious. And then we see that the Lord fell on Jonah. Then he said, what happened? Tell me about yourself. Who are you? And Jonah said, I am a Hebrew from Israel. I fear the Lord. Who is the Lord? Jehovah. The God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Remember Genesis 1.1. Right? The sea and the dry land. In, in fact, this one would be 1 verse 7, 7 to 10. 
And he says, this is the God I worship and this is the God I fear. Now understand that they don't have this language like we do, saying that I worship God. They use very action-oriented. Worship is not an acceptable term in the Hebrew sense. When you say, I fear God, then people know who is your God. When you say, I serve God, people know who is your God. But when you say, I worship God, it is not part of the lingo. Right? It's not part of the lingo. It is part of our English words right, that we use. And we abandon all the other Hebrew terms. So maybe we should say, we fear God, right? we fear the Lord, and maybe our lives will be better. But understand this, when Jonah says he feared the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land, he ran away from this God. He ran away from this God. So now in verse 10, the men were exceedingly afraid. Everybody was scared. Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. He left Israel and that's where God is. So they think that God is there in Israel because he had told them. Then they said to him, what shall we do that the sea may be calm for us? Another indication that this storm is a very unusual storm. And the sea was getting more tempestuous, very rough. Then he says, pick me up, throw me into the sea. Then the sea will be, become calm from, for you. For I know this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to return to land, but they could not. And the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord. You see, they cried out. Even without knowing God, they cried out to God. We pray, O oh Lord, please don't let us perish for this man's life. Do not charge us with innocent blood. They say that they are innocent. For you, O oh Lord, have done it to please you. What are they afraid of? They are afraid to be charged of murder. See, when you throw somebody off the boat, you are committing murder. And so they cried out to God, don't charge us for this. I have done this so that it would please you. Understand this? Pleasing you means we are trying to look for favor, grace in the eyes of God. And so they picked up Jonah, threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. The men feared the Lord exceedingly, offered a sacrifice and took vows. Interestingly, you would find that these people knew what to do because they knew about the God of Israel. right? They know the God of Israel. And now they realize they have to offer a sacrifice. They are likely not uh, to be somebody who is uh, a total foreigner. Okay? But they may be people who have left Israel and have done uh, stayed elsewhere. Uh, but maybe originally from Israel. No, maybe. We don't know. But whatever it is, we can read these terms. Feared the Lord exceedingly. Offered a sacrifice to the Lord took vows. These are all very Hebrew actions. How did they know? Well, they do know. They know how to cry out to God. And so, whatever it is, this was a man who was not with them, and they don't know who he was. The Jonah was just one person they didn't know. And here, these were praying to all kinds of gods, and now they realize Jehovah God is the true God. Now in verse 17, we read of a very unusual uh, episode. It says that Jehovah, he had prepared a great fish. The Hebrew is fish. 
So when you hear the word whale, this is wrong. A whale cannot swallow Jonah. So it has to be a big fish, something that can swallow Jonah with. Now we don't know what it is, but all we know that this happened. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. For some interesting thing is that three appears to be a, 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 an indication of death, right? Indication of death. And so when Jesus came to the tomb of Lazarus, it was four days, completely dead. So indication of death is three days and three nights. And hence, uh, this idiom is used in the New Testament. All right? So this is the end of chapter one. Any questions? Uh, Pastor, the, the seamen, ah, you know, yes. uh, uh, the semen, mm. when they, somehow, somehow, however, they cast lot, uh, every, the locks will still go to uh, this uh, Jonah. Yes. Huh? Yes. Mm. I, I think, the, the, see, uh, the things that God controls mm. is not man's decision. It is the, they are the things that is outside man's decision, like the storm, right? We read of the storm. So uh, God caused these influences, right? The storm. Now, of course, the storm affects them. Uh, uh, then this is the lots. So when they cast the lots, it is also not their call. So God can influence the lots. Now, the third thing here is, in the sea, God can control the fish. And so what you can see is, God is using the creation and using anything and everything that does not affect our direct decisions. So God doesn't, you know, like, 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 like evil spirits possess control. God wants Jonah to make up his mind. Uh, and he's using this situation to impress him. Huh? The other thing you notice that these mariners, the seamen, right? A spirit seamen, I think it must be. These seamen may be from Israel. Maybe from Israel. Mm. Because they are from the boat of Israel. And they are probably the ones that travel. Uh, to far away lands. And so Jonah knows how to buy a ticket. So they are <laughs> the ones who, who moves a lot and very seldom mm. in Israel. So when they were traveling out, and you notice one of the stories of the Northern Kingdom is, many of them worship other gods. That's why oh. God was angry with them as well. Mm. And so the mariners was calling out to everybody's own god. And so when he came to Jonah, he says, you should call on your God. And That's then crazy. only they realized that, oh, Jonah is worshipping oh. here, Jehovah. Jehovah. And so that's why we know that after all this said and done, they, they, they actually uh, was afraid of Jehovah. Uh, they made an offering, remember? And uh, then they make vows. And what vows would they be? Those words called vows uh, are very important because the word vow, uh, let me show you the word. The word vow is actually to, to say the promise seven times. Oh, mm, yeah. And this is how, remember in Exodus, you say, mm. and the book of Numbers, don't, don't simply vow, you know. Mm. And so, and, and when you make a vow to God, you must honor it. And so they make those vows, which means that they are very familiar with this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, we are reading an ancient, uh, ancient practice. Mm. And uh, that's what they feel because they have to make a decision of somebody needs to be thrown into the sea. Mm, 
And nobody wants to be responsible for that. Oh. And so even when, when Jonah said to do it, uh, so you read here, they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, do not let us perish for this man's life. Don't charge us for his blood, you know. Mm. We are going to kill somebody by throwing him overboard. Mm. And so they, they, they know that there is a, a responsibility, a judgment. Mm. Uh, and so that's why I'm suspecting that these are not foreigners. I believe they are, are part of the nation of Israel. No. Maybe they travel so much that they forgot God. Yeah. I think, Pastor, one thing. Uh, mm. I experienced seamen. Uh, my, mm. I think this storm must be. It must be a very unusual. That's why I said. Uh, uh. They, 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 they are experienced people. Storm mm. is no big deal. Uh. Mm. But they may encounter, encounter something that they know that it is divine, it is extraordinary. Mm. Mm. Why so is it the statement uh, 14, the second part, uh, said, mm. uh, Oh Lord, have, we, we, we do it as it please you. Yes. Oh, you, oh Lord, have done it as it please you. That means they know God is in control. Uh. So they are saying that if what Jonah said is true, you see here, remember this is what Jonah said, you know, throw mm. me into the sea, will become calm. For you. And uh. this tempest is because of me. Mm. And so these people say, yes, now God, I'm giving him back to you, uh. but we really don't understand what is happening, you know. Uh. He is alive and we, I, don't, 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 don't hold me responsible. That, that's, that's basically what it means, uh. So the, the moment they throw Jonah in and if it really pleases God, uh, then the storm will stop, which yeah, was not yeah. exactly ha happened. And the sea ceases from its raging. Uh, yeah. So that means they are more or less like uh, taking part to help to, to punish Jonah. Uh, to do what Jonah has said. Lah, huh? To do what Jonah has said mm -hmm. right here. And they, they really don't know how because this is not a simple thing. You're supposed to throw a life overboard. is like killing somebody. That's why he says, do not charge us with innocent blood. Innocent blood is thou shalt not kill, you know. You're killing somebody who is innocent. Yeah. And, and, and they know. Remember in, in um, Genesis chapter 9, uh, you shall not shed innocent blood. And so they understand Genesis 9. They must be Hebrews, I think, these people. Then, verse 16, mm. uh, they offered a sacrifice to the Lord. And exactly. Took vows. What sort of sacrifice and uh, what sort of vows? And this would be, I would say, very Hebrew practice. This would be... Uh, they have got sin, Thanksgiving. sacrifice, guilt, sacrifice. It could be a Thanksgiving. Uh. I, guilt it, guilt it, sacrifice, like, uh, they are likely to be a thanksgiving. Oh. And thanksgiving. Uh, thanksgiving. Because they didn't die. Mm. And because it really scared they, they them. They fear right? the Lord so much that they give thanksgiving. Yeah. I, I will feel it, that they give a guilt sacrifice. Guilt because they didn't die. Mm. He didn't and, and, die, and, yes. Yeah, they didn't die and they fear. And now understand oh, that taking the vows uh, is the most serious thing that they can do. Oh. Now, we don't know what oh, vows oh. they made. Lah, huh? But in the Hebrew term, when you make a vow in the name of Jehovah, you have to deliver it. Mm -hmm. Else God will strike you dead. <laughs> that, that kind of thinking. Now, we, we don't know what they made. made lah. Uh, so, we look at the positive <clears throat> side. Lah. Actually, Jonah, my. Mm. Does he know that the, the storm was stirred up because of him or not? Does yes. He know? You know what? Uh? He knows. He knows. Uh? I think he, 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 he will take it as nothing God happened. is the after him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he pretend nothing happened and yeah. see what happened later. Lo. Came oh. for humble. Yeah. Uh. 
Uh-huh. But basically, he, he came to a point where you cannot ignore. So my the point, I think, from this power. chapter one is this. If, uh-huh. See, if God is calling, uh, it will be very obvious. There's no guesswork. And, and sometimes it is so obvious that, uh, that other people can see it as well. Uh, and, and there is no ambiguity. No, don't know whether it is true or not. Uh, wow. In this case, you can say that it is true. It affected everybody and mm. everybody feared God. Mm. To, me, to me, this chapter is telling me that uh, when God is after you, you have no way to, to run, no place to run and hide. Possible. But you remember one thing here in this chapter, God doesn't force him. Yeah. He got free will. Huh? Yes. But God will influence his thinking. I think I if you are my prophet, why are you running away? If you're not my prophet, then no, nothing mm. to say. Lah. Yeah. Yeah. Because Jonah is not God a normal is, person. Yeah, God is serious. Lah. Mm. Yeah. And he thinks that he can run away and pretend nothing happened. Yeah, okay, then verse 17. Uh, how come uh, that three days in the fish stomach uh, uh, remember I, didn't I, I, die? I symbolic. Said, it, symbolic. Symbolic of Jesus. Three uh, days. I mean, it's not three really days. three days. Lah. Symbolic of death. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Symbolic of the death of Jesus. It's symbolic of death. Basically, it's just a symbol of death. Oh. Now, whether he was in there three days, three nights, that's a long time. Uh. Uh, it, it, it could be just three, uh, part of one day, uh, part of two days, and one full day. Uh. So that would be three days, right? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't just, have to be 72 hours. Uh, it will be like uh, we're traveling to overseas. You fly <laughs> midnight. Uh, yep. uh, like second night yep. morning. Yeah. Second yeah. day morning. Yeah. I think you go to America will be a second mm. will be day. Really. Yeah. So, uh. so basically, it's trying to say that Jonah is in a way uh, considered dead, considered dead as right. a punishment. Uh. Symbolic, symbolic. Mm. Until he cried out. So chapter 2 is when he, he realized that his life is in God's hands. I don't think we can apply this to generally anyone. No. I would say that this is to people whom God has been using. Mm. And I'm also of the opinion that when, when it is truly uh, 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 something that God wants a person to do, mm. uh, it is very clear. Mm. 